This company took a, a real risk in 1957 when it put a television station in Bryan College Station, Texas. Little old towns of 25 and 30,000, uh, probably the smallest in America. We decided to put a television station on the air at a time when most people said, if you do that, you're crazy, or uh, you'll go broke, or there's no way a, uh, a city the size of Bryan College Station can support a television station. It was an exciting event. It came time to sign on, and Harry, had t Harry Gillum had told me, he said, you say the first words and introduce the national anthem, and then, then I introduced Harry, and uh, he said a few words, and we introduced Buddy Bostick. That was an exciting event that night. And because of great support locally, we've, we've come a long, long way. It was such a very small station. 29th Street ended right here. Go across the creek and get on Rosemary, but that was the end of it right there. Literally, we operated uh, somewhat as a satellite of our sister station in Waco. Our local coverage consisted of doing local news and sports, the weather we took from our station in Waco, and we had uh, an afternoon community talk show we did have notables from time to time. Robert Kennedy was one. The news department consisted of one person. That person had a Polaroid camera that they carried with them and a 16 millimeter film camera. We could do film. The equipment, of course, compared to today was so primitive. It was mechanical and analog, um, black and white. We were obviously a small staff, like I say, one news guy. We had a sportsman who did local sports. Elections, uh, we had a, a large chalkboard. We had an artist, he put all the candidates' names on there and with boxes. And then we had chalk, and as we'd get updated numbers, we'd write those numbers on there, and that was our reporting of the election returns. In the earliest times, of course, we did do some 16 millimeter film uh, and could do with sound. And so we, and we did a few commercials that where you would actually do it that way. Automobile dealers, they would, they would bring a car out here and drive it in the studio and they, to be able to do the commercial. Always live at that point. Joe Falk had a, a place he sold Lawn mowers. So he would say, uh, lawn boy, he said, starts every time. And he'd pull the cord and, uh, and the thing would start. And of course, he'd turn it right back off. And Harry said, Joe, you don't want to do that on, on the air because it might not start. And he said, I have no doubt that it'll start. I know it'll start. He did that thing for years, and it always started. It never missed. That was one time Harry was wrong. Then, of course, the miracle of videotape came, and the first videotape machine was a monster thing that we almost didn't get in the control room and used a big two-inch tape on it and so on. And, of course, that was the beginning of the change. It was 1976 when we went straight to CBS. The 70s that we, as a station, really went full color. This is Dimension 3 News, a comprehensive report of this day's events. With Suzanne Black with the news. Orlando Santos with the sports. And Albert Zip with the weather. The Texas Municipal Power Agency got a shot in the arm this week from a civil appeals court in Houston. The technology then was much more mechanical, less electronic, less digital, uh, copies of stories in triplicates, 
Uh, so we saw a lot of transition uh, from film to our first mini cam, which was a 75 pound uh, pack with a, a cart and a station wagon that required us to transport it around. Well, we started off with film. We had a Bell and Howe crank, and then we went to a Scoopic, right, which was a still film. You had to do 16 millimeter film, and you'd have to get back by four o'clock to run it through the system so that it would be processed in time for six o'clock, and somehow it always tore right in the middle. We had gotten our film processor, which was quite a machine, and there was a grass fire, and I busted it trying to get there before they put the fire out because I wanted orange flames. <laughs> And I got there and got some fire stuff and brought it back and uh, uh, processed it. And to see that stuff coming out on the film was just, it was magic. That was certainly a big deal and, and I thought it was really cool because uh, we, we had a grass fire in living color. Back in those days it was, uh, I remember we always in this building had our uh, our spray bottle and a can of Comet because at the time on the glass weather maps we actually used magic markers and after each weather cast you would go through and get the Comet out because you'd have to scrub, scrub that map down and get ready for the, the 6 or the 10 o'clock. The board of directors uh, authorized us to change our tower location to actually build a tall tower so that we could really increase our coverage area, we were able to find a place uh, at Carl's and built the new tower out there. It made such a tremendous change, it extended our reach considerably, it changed our fortunes as far as the way we sold the commercials. This is KBTX Television, Channel 3, Bryan, Texas. is Channel 3 News at 6 with Jeff Braun, Jeff McShann on sports and weather with Troy Kimmel. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us on this special evening. Tonight marks a milestone in the history of KBTX TV. In a few moments, we will begin broadcasting from a new facility near Carlos, Texas. We went out and went through parts of Robertson County, parts of Madison County, parts of Grimes County, just trying to find out where we could pick up a signal. We had an old black and white TV that you plug into the lighter of your, of your car. Yep, there's a signal. Yeah, it's fading here. Okay, jot that down. You know, we wanted to document where we had a strong signal, where we had a weak signal. And I, I remember Harry Gillum was like a kid at Christmas, knowing that all this was taking place and then the day comes that he gets to, you know, flip that switch. And that was, I think, the one single event that brought KBTX into true competition in the state of Texas because we could reach a greater audience. We all had to be out on the set for the opening. As soon as you heard that theme, so I'm out here for a 10 second intro shot and you go back out and start typing again. From KBTX TV, Bryan College Station, this is Channel 3 News, The Evening Report with Debbie Ramsey and Jeff Braun, Jeff McShann on sports and weather with Kevin Brewer. Athletic director Jackie Sherrill held a press conference. The photographer had to carry around a three-quarter inch deck that probably weighed 40 to 50 pounds. On his other shoulder was a camera that probably weighed as much. There was a mount on top of it for a light. Then you had a cord coming down from the light to a belt, it looked like Batman's belt. It had to be charged constantly. The cameras had to have these big brick blocks for batteries. So you had to take spares with you every time you went out. So it wasn't just grab a camera and go. Back in those days, all of our scripts were done on five page carbon paper and you had to split your pages out and hand deliver them to everybody in production or everybody that would need one of them. Prompter in those days was a camera mounted and a like a conveyor belt and the script went underneath it and the camera just shot it and that's what you saw on the screen. And we had some anchors that had a problem grasping that concept and you could actually see them reading the words as they were reading the news. Head still, eyes read. It was, it was a big change.
KBGX TV, Bryan College Station. Live from the Clayton Williams Alumni Center, Channel 3 News at 10, Special Edition, Aggie Bonfire 89. By now, diehard Aggie fans are celebrating another year of bonfire traditions. Good evening from Texas A&M. I'm Lisa Keys. And I'm Rick Davenport. Lisa, it's obvious that the excitement, there's fire with this bonfire tonight, but what's more obvious... setup was very extensive. It took a, a lot of manpower just to get things going. It was exhilarating. I remember that because, you know, things were fast-paced and you didn't have much time. And, and I don't believe there was even, a, there wasn't a teleprompter then in those days for, you know, those live shots. And so everything was kind of uh, fly by the seat of your pants type thing. But that, I think, brought a lot of the element of excitement to it as well. New Star 3 Sports presents Taco Bell's Friday Football Fever Show. Hello everyone, week six of the high school football season and for folks around here that meant the start of district play, although some teams have already got things going. We didn't want to do Friday football fever from a news desk back in the 90s. So we would have our own little look. So we would go to a school and we'd go, hey man, if you're tearing out some lockers, we'd like to borrow those and use them as a background. Hey, if you've got some old football equipment that you know, you've got to throw away because it's damaged, nobody's going to see that it's damaged on TV, so we'd like to hang it up. You would have a scoreboard, and we utilized that quite a bit, and it didn't have a whole lot of flash. I mean, you had a team, and you had a final score, and you would have a banner across the top that said high school football. Your video that would come in, if it was shot on three-quarter inch, you would hope that you had a very well-lit stadium, and there weren't a whole lot of those, because a three-quarter inch camera had a difficult time in low light situations. Now you can go to a, you know, a smaller school and shoot at their stadium and you can still uh, adjust the video in such a way that it looks pretty good. Brazos Valley, this is your news. Sit back and enjoy your lunch with hosts Jim Baronet and Brenda Sims, news anchor Carmen Izzo, and Roger Berry with your weather. Midday Magazine. This is your news. Hello, Brazos Valley. Welcome to Midday Magazine. I'm Jim Baronet. And I'm Brenda Simpson. Today is Friday, October the 30th. See, you wore your Halloween outfit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you well, look like, <laughs> doesn't you. he? Doesn't right. he look good. like? Good, good. I'm a sailor today. <laughs> I was at the very first food drive, and John Bow said to me, there the cars were out from the Brazos Center all the way out to Briarcrest. And I, I was amazed. And he said, do you doubt the power of the media? And I thought, wow. The building has also grown. The original building, of course, was just really kind of a small box building. Uh, there was one big open office area and then the studio. And uh, then as we were growing, then we decided to add uh, some more office space. Later on, then we had to do it again. Then the, the final addition was made. The, the new set, the newsroom, the audience is actually going to get to see something new, something that they've never seen before. It sets us up for the future with uh, digital television and HD TV, and that uh, the, the production department will now have the room to expand into HD TV, which of course is the future of television and the way we will be looking at television in the future. From the new broadcast center in the heart of the Brazos Valley, you're watching Brazos Valley this morning. Your first look at news with Mike Wright. Michelle Merrill and Roger Berry with your weather. Brazos Valley this morning. This is your news. Of course, the cameras, I mean, they were on wheels, you know, and if they weren't manned, sometimes they just kind of take off and you just kind of have to stay with it a little bit and then they'd catch it and you'd be right back where you were. I can remember when we first went to a newsroom computer system and it was mind-boggling and of course that was I mean that was a very basic system I don't know how the technology's changed <laughs> you're asking the wrong person <laughs> 
One of the things that really blew my mind, the engineers said, you know what, we're gonna try to get you guys to FTP your stuff back. And I said, FTP, what is that? And they said, well, Daryl, we understand that you're, you know, computer literate, so let me just put it in layman's terms. You're basically gonna take your file and you're gonna send it through the internet and we're gonna get it back here. I didn't mean to offend them, but I laughed and I said, that ain't gonna work. Holy smokes, it did work. And I was working with Dwayne Parsons then and he was on back here at KBTX and John Wilson and I were in San Diego. I said, hey Dwayne, I said, what does that look like? I said, does that look like crap? He goes, believe it or not, it looks like you guys are sitting here and you've edited it and you've sent it to us. And when Dwayne gave it his seal of approval, and he's a guy that's worked in television longer than I have, I thought, you know what? We're onto something here. You're watching News 3 at 6 with Rusty Surratt, Kathleen Whitty, Weather with Shell Winkley, and Sports with Daryl Bruffett on KBTX News 3. The people you know, the news you trust. I get asked all the time, hey, uh, when do you tape the news? And my response nearly every time is, are you kidding me? We don't tape the news. Do you think if we taped the news, we'd let those kind of mistakes get on the air? No way. There are times that we do stuff and it's out of our control. We're not trying to be funny. We're not trying to be embarrassing, but it's live television. Mistakes happen, and sometimes they're really pretty funny. Still recording? Just keep recording. I'll just... Three, two, <laughs> The center of it continues to spin around counterclockwise. That's the center of the main booger here. Booger? Is that what he said? It sounded like he said booger. He did say booger. That's what it sounded like. Plus our band of the <laughs> Ended sports. The two sluggers are tied at 62. Samasosa. Sam Sosa. <laughs> this is a new start free news break. Good afternoon, Francis Valley. I'm John Bose. Here's a look at some of the stories coming up later today on New Star 3. Yeah, but uh, we'll have that five-day forecast also coming up a little bit later. Okay, thanks, Ch uh, Charles. Ch well, my Charles. goodness, where'd you come up with that? 49 yep. in Midland, and then you get out into West Texas. 30 in Amarillo, 37 in El Paso. And I'm going to have to get a bigger hammer, I guess. <laughs> oh, goodness sakes. Technology is great. We have okay. oh, great. He That's was good. excited, but I think his wife was more excited. <laughs> you could hear in the background from <laughs> Well, I could hear a woman. I, maybe that was his wife. I hope it was. <laughs> okay. What's happening? <laughs> Let's find out. I can't believe you said that. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to show today, but yes, every time you see that will be tough. Uh, I don't know what they're going to show today, but yes, show today, but yes, show today, but yes, every time. You if you're serious about improving your fitness, you might want to try walking. If you're the truly busy type, Kirsten recommends increasing your lifestyle activities, such as taking the stairs instead of the elevator. Later. Also, she suggests having some gas, uh, saving some gas at the mall parking lot and parking further out and walking in. Uh, ultimately, <laughs> look for opportunities to burn those calories. Much of the research carried out on animals is for animals, such as veterinary research. <laughs> animals rights, folks. We're going to have Three, two, one, violinist Poucher La Totola. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's a world-renowned clarinetist. Or It'll make me laugh. Flutist. 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 And he'll be here to do the soliloquy of the daisy daffodils. <laughs> <laughs> well, dancing and prancing. There will be frolicking. Oh, yes, there will. <laughs> Who would want to, to go to this? Shoot me. Firefighters were able to save several pieces of antiques. And something else irreplaceable? the owner's dog, Rosie. <laughs> Catch March Madness Fever, because it's tournament time. <gasps> that did it. <laughs> you got it. It's under investigation. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump continue gearing up for their second presidential debate, Noel Bello. Oh, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> the Republican nominee held an... Rusty. So you got plenty Absolutely. of time to stop here or any of the other three locations, uh, Madisonville, Franklin, and Navasota. They're open until 7 o'clock here this evening. As we wrap up this show, uh, we want to remind everybody, if you come through... You
Shake it. Hello, Brazos Valley. Welcome to Midday Magazine, and it's a gorgeous day once again. But boy, we had a little activity during the night, didn't we, Roger? Not you and me. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Let's get that straight right now, Randy. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> oh, goodness sakes. No, we did have some pretty good... We, we call ourselves a family. It's the kids that have worked here who are just, they're amazing. The, the stories, the success stories, the victories, the things that they have accomplished because they got their start right here. Having come in, you know, freshly out of college, uh, this was a great open door. And I, I, would, I would hope that in the future, it remains that open door for people breaking into the industry. I hope it continues to do what it has always done really well. The journalists that are formed here have gone on to do a lot of great things. And it's always set a foundation of journalism that I think has held most of us in pretty good stead throughout our entire career. KBDX is still going to be about the community. The people in the building and the building itself will change and things like that, but I just don't see the philosophy of this TV station changing. Foundation for KBTX has always been community, about this community, and uh, uh, taking care of it has uh, been a, a good path for us to be on, I think. If I had a wish for the station, it would probably be that we preserve that kind of feeling, uh, the KBTX family has. Uh, it's a special deal. Um, you know, I've been here a jillion years, so I haven't experienced the kind of stuff that maybe we hear from, from folks that move on. And maybe they didn't realize it, you know, when, when they did move on, that, that, that they might miss us <laughs> as much as they do. But that's a pretty special thing. And Regardless of what technology does and what the industry does, I think if KBTX can preserve that family type connectivity that we've had over the years and that we have today, uh, it'll still be a really special place.